Welcome back to the IU427 garage, everybody. Well, the boys are gone. They, uh, they left a couple of days ago, and we have continued work on the 25th anniversary car since then. We've been working on little stuff around the car, stuff that we had started while they were here. Some of the stuff uh, is just you know odds and ends that needed to be done. What I'm concentrating on right now is the back of the car, trying to get everything finished in the back of the car, underneath the car, in the trunk of the car, just so that we can get all of the panels permanently installed back there. So come back and uh, we'll get you all caught up on what's going on back there. So one of the first things I did post visit from the boys who came down and helped me with the car was get up in the back of the car and start to work on fastening all of the Ron Francis harness up to the chassis. So I went in there and I've got, you know, cushion clips over here and cushion clips in the center of the um, the tunnel. I'm going to see if I can sneak you around to this side and take a peek at some of that stuff. So, so these lines right here are cushion clipped up inside of both sides. Um, there's still one straggly little uh, um, tie wrap right there. But for the most part, we've got all of the harness secured with cushion clips. So what I'm working on now is I'm trying to get everything in the trunk ready to put all of the panels, permanently affix the panels in the back. And so then I can put stuff like, like this, the, uh, the charcoal canister, um, all, all the supporting stuff in the back, you know, get the um, uh, uh, filler tube for the fuel tank kind of in. So, because at some point we're gonna have to put fuel in this thing. Um, what I'm working on right now is some of the panels themselves. So for instance, I put these two panels this one and this one in last night before I went in for the evening. And those go in before the bottom. And then what I've got to do on the bottom is I've actually got to trim out the opening all the way around this so that we can get the... Um, bottom the trunk floor bottom in here now i will say this even though i put these in first they can be put in afterwards i don't like them to sit higher than the three quarter inch tube because for instance some of the kits including the complete kits and i don't know some of them have and some of them haven't come with trunk floor carpeting but they don't come with the, the walls of the trunk so the carpeting for the walls doesn't come with them so if you notice in here, I went ahead and I put black pop rivets in so that if we decide that we're not going to do carpet on the sides, then at least everything looks nice and we don't have to worry about going back and changing out any of the silver rivets for black. However, since these are powder coated, a lot of times this edge for the bottom panel here will be exceedingly tight. And so we may have to do some uh, trimming or some um, smoothing, grinding, on the edges of, the, of this panel on this side and this side in order for them to fit nice so there's no bow in them. Because the last thing we want is for this panel to be tin canning. Now we should be, even if it were a little bit snug, we should be able to eliminate any tin canning with the um, heat and sound mat that we're using. But it'd be nice if it just kind of went in and it, it went down without having to do a whole lot of um, finagling in order to get it all tight to the floor and to the chassis. So we're going to work on that um, a little bit later today and then hopefully um, get the fuel pump installed back in here. Now one of the things that we went over um, is that we can't, we're, we're having trouble getting the, the, a fitting for the fuel return line. 
I don't know if it's a part number that Russell is no longer going to make or whether they are just at a point because of the COVID um, supply chain issues that they don't have any available. Whichever it is, we decided it wasn't worth waiting any longer for. And so we're getting a new fuel pump hanger that has AN6 in and AN6 out that will go directly into our hanger for the fuel lines that we already have. Once that's here, I'm hoping today, that can go in and then the floor can be permanently mounted. And then you can see we've got the fuel pump and the fuel sending unit connectors right here so they can get hooked up and then that floor can go in and be permanently attached. Done. From there what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll mount these outside panels. So I'll mount this one first, then I can put that charcoal canister in. The charcoal canister is going to mount somewhere back here. I can put a cushion clip right here and then that'll keep it out of the way of the, um, the fuel filler tube. So that'll get you caught up to this point. I'm going to continue working the rest of the afternoon, evening. I got home a little bit early from work today and so that's going to allow me to knock some stuff off of the list for this one. Georgia satellites. Keep your hands to yourself. All right, I have learned over a period of a few years that the tighter you can get this panel to fit from the start, the less less issues you have you'll have with um, uh, wander when you're trying to mark this out with your uh, your your black marker or whatever. Uh, means you're using to mark the panel. Now, I taped masking tape. So, two inch masking tape, like this, all the way around the, um, the perimeter underneath where I'm going to be cutting this out. And Factory 5 now conveniently puts this access hole so you can uh, mark your panels. <laughs> if you're not using this piece in its... Uh, as delivered form, which we're not. So, this enables you to reach your arm in there and get this marked out with uh, a black marker. And so what I'm getting at is I've got some clips, I've got some clamps right here on the edge that are holding this piece forward as far as it needs to go. One there, one there. And then on this edge of my box, which is still just kind of floating in air, um, I've got another clamp that's holding because that, that uh, drop box has a 90 degree break on it right here where we're going to end up being uh, uh, fastening the, um, the, t the, the top to our drop box and that's going to give it to its uh, rigidity. So I've got it clamped there so this thing is good and secure. Now that it, that's all in place, I'm going to reach in through the access hole. I'm going to mark it all the way around. I'm going to take it out. I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm going to drill out four corners. I'll start probably with an eighth inch drill bit on this corner, this corner, this corner, and the back corner. And then I'm going to connect the dots with the um, electric shear that I use. So I'll probably bring you back when I'm ready to fit this. And it may just need a little more trimming or finessing at that point. All right, much later in the day now. Um, music update Van Halen is this love I'm going to edit what I said earlier um, it appears as though some of this aluminum is different and I can't remember if I ran into this on the Texas cars I assembled it or not however this bottom panel appears as though it needs to go in first. I had to trim way more of it than I had initially thought I would. And so what I did is I held it off this side about an eighth of an inch all the way down. And then I trimmed this side. And I did the same thing on this side. I, I've got about an eighth of an inch gap on this side. And this just allows the, the panel to slide in this way without getting caught on the pop rivets and everything on the other panel. So... It almost appears as though Factory 5 plans for you to put this bottom piece in first and then, then the side piece. The problem, again, that I have with that is that if this piece rests on top of here, then 
you know, at the two ends, like, you know, on, on this side and this side, what's going to happen is it's going to be up a little higher and it's not going to be flush against the top of here. And, um, especially if you're carpeting this and you want that carpet to bend around here and, and have something to glue to. Um, if this edge is sticking up, you're going to have to end up coming back here and filing this or taking it down with something in order to get that carpet to wrap around there. Um, regardless, I have um, just a small portion <laughs> of the Clecos that I have here in the shop fastened into this, this panel. Um, and you may ask yourself, well, you know, in, in the past, Frank has said that you don't need to put a Cleco in every hole. And that's true. This panel has so many holes in it, though, um, and so many fastening points. The reason the Clecos are in every single drilled hole that I've drilled so far is to show me that I didn't miss any. Um, the extra time that it takes to get all these in now and make sure they're all clear and that I can get rivets in them later is well worth the cost of having to pull all those Clecos out later. Um, the only things I don't have drilled right now are this back portion all the way down and that is because right here the gas tank strap is still underneath here so this this panel is still loose on the bottom you can see and um, I only want to do that once so what will happen is that is the one panel that I will I'll silicone it in place first and then I'll probably drill and either pop rivet or Cleco a couple of spots and then I'll let it sit overnight and then I'll come back in and I'll drill those holes out all the way across the bottom and at the center supports um, because I don't want to take the gas tank strap off more than once. Um, I suppose I could leave it hanging down. Um, I do have the bridge jack to put underneath it. I could always do that, but I've always done it this way in the past where I just, you know, put that back in place with a couple of Clecos or a couple of rivets, and then I just let it set overnight. But uh, as you can see here, the, um, the Clecos helped to pull all this up in place. So now this is nice and firm in there. And uh, this is where I'm gonna end it for this, uh, this evening. It's, uh, it's about feeding time. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Alrighty, buddy. Next day, uh, music update. Jackson Brown, the Pretender. Um, as you guys know, the um, the owner of the 25th anniversary car was here the last time we did a video for that car, and it's a couple days later, and I'm home from work. Oh, it's I've got a couple hours to work on the car, so. Uh, we had a discussion about uh, some fuel pump fittings, and I'm going to walk over to the bench and I'll show you what we decided. But basically, we're going to order a new fuel pump hanger. Um, when we first ordered some parts in the back to adapt the AN6 lines that we're running for both supply and return for that Gen 3 Coyote, um, we were, we were trying to use as many parts that were included in the factory five complete kit as we possibly could. And so there was a fuel pump hanger and a fuel pump. The fuel pump is a Walbro 255, I think. I'll, I'll see if I can put on my Magoos over there and uh, decipher the number that's on the side. But um, so regardless, we have, a, we have a large enough fuel pump. The problem we have is getting those AN6 lines in and out of the fuel pump hanger. The supply out of the pump to the front of the car for the engine, we didn't have a problem with. It's a 3 8 to AN6 adapter that they sell for a Ford fuel pump hanger. It's a, it's, you've probably seen them before. It's, it's the, the raised ridge barb. So the fitting goes on and there's a slotted nut that goes in from the backside. It screws together. There's two rubber O-rings inside. It seals it all up, doesn't leak. They're great. Um, as a matter of fact, I used them on my car when I first built it um, and later switched out to the Pro-M fuel pump hanger, which is what we just ordered for Pauline, the 25th anniversary car. So, here is the fuel pump hanger. So, as provided from Factory 5, and I've already torn it apart because uh, I'm going to use the, the fuel pump. Um, as provided by Factory 5, it's a 3 8 out. And they instruct you, and, and I think I may have as well in a video, to ream this out because as this pipe is cut, 
with a like tubing cutter wherever it's produced it makes the fitting smaller on the end so um, by reaming out the end you can get full flow three-eighths out of it the return is still a quarter inch so three-eighths quarter inch on the Fox body Mustangs from 87 actually before that 86 that was the year of the first fuel injected cars here in California anyway um, 86 through whenever uh, I know through 93 this line here was 5 16 so Summit Racing, Jags, Amazon, all those places that carry like Russell fittings or like their own brands like Jag and, uh, Jags and uh, Summit have their own brands. They have both the 3 8 fitting for this that goes to AN6 and the 5 16 No problem. We ran into problem with this one, the quarter inch. I don't think these hangers are as popular as they used to be, meaning everybody is replacing these with like the Pro-Am or one of the other ones that we won't mention because we've had bad luck with it. Um, but it was still shown on the Summit Racing website when we ordered it. It said would ship directly from supplier. We have had two or three um, delays where they've emailed us and said your your part is delayed um you know it's going to be uh shipped on x date and you know do you want to continue waiting and i think we did that two or three times but now we're getting to the point where we got to start buttoning up the stuff in the back of the car i mean literally everything from i hate using that word too sorry everything from the rear bulkhead the rear cockpit wall back can be buttoned up we're done so as long as I get this fuel, you know, the fuel pump hanger in the next couple of days, we're, we're going to have this whole back end buttoned up. The only thing I have left back there is the fuel pump, basically, and the charcoal canister, a couple little stray wires, and the wiring harness to get, you know, fastened up to the bottom of the, um, the chassis, and we're done in the back. So I'd really like to get that wrapped up so that I can kind of move to the front of the car and to the dash to the heater, stuff like that, and start, you know, now that the engine's in, we, we know where everything's kind of kind of fit. So we had to, like, you know, make a decision. And so the decision was made. We're, we ordered the Pro-M hanger. It should be here in a couple of days. Chris over there at Pro-M is really good. Um, usually, if it's in stock, you'll, you know, he'll ship it out next day, and, and we'll have it in a few, depending on which shipping option was chosen. So that's what we're going to do back there. Once that's in, I've got the fuel tank vent to take care of. The charcoal canister that mounts on the side, aluminum, the aluminum has to go in. And before that aluminum goes in, the inner aluminum has to go in. Before that goes in, the bottom trunk aluminum where we put the drop, drop uh, trunk mod has to go in. So there's a sequence to all the panels in the back. So I don't want to bury myself and then have to undo something. Anyway, so that's what we're going to do on that. And the fuel pump let me take a look here i'll put on the magoos so i can read the number on it the fuel pump is a gs 340 so that is that is a 255 liter per hour pump so it's more than adequate for what we're going to be doing with this car we're not going to do any special tunes we're not any adding any power adders that pump is going to be just fine and three eighths supply and return is going to do us well we won't have any uh issues with back pressure at the fuel pressure regulator um, because we have an ample return flow size um, so we're not going to deadhead the um uh, the fuel injectors by oh you know not having enough return we'll be able to dial the the um, fuel pr pressure regulator in really good one other thing that we found while we were here and i'm a little disappointed because on earlier kits, earlier complete kits, whether it was the uh, the late the real you know the later Mark Threes or the early Mark Fours with the complete kit, the fuel tank gasket, the seal that goes in the fuel filler neck, was a much better quality piece than the one that we were shipped with, with this car. So you can see in here, this thing moves around. Now, I know somebody out there is going to say, well, once you put the filler tube in it's going to expand it and that's 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 true but having worked in the construction field as long as i have 
um, I'll give you a, a plumbing reference. There are two types of PEX tubing. That's the cross-link polyethylene tubing that we use to plumb houses. One, you use an expansion tool and open it up, and then the tubing wants to return to its previous state. It wants to return back to that, that same size it was before. And one type, you put a clamp on the outside. Now keep in mind what I said for the first one. It wants to return to its normal size. So if you're clamping it down, there's always that tubing wanting to push that clamp apart. So if the clamp were to fail or there was a pressure, uh, like a, 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 a spike in water pressure, you know, it has a chance to open up. Same thing here. We put the tube in there, but that, that, that donut, that seal, is always going to want to go back to where it was. It's not the same material. It's not cross-link polyethylene. But the fact that it doesn't seal when there's nothing in, in on the inside leads me to believe that eventually it's going to fail. And when it fails, it's going to fail big because it's just it's it's going to crack all the way around the outside and then you know you go to fill your tank and then it's all on the ground. So we ordered the stock Ford piece probably from Amazon. I think that's where I found the link. Rock Auto used to have them. A lot of auto parts stores used to have them. A lot of online auto parts stores used to have them. For whatever reason, they're getting harder to find from Ford. But we found you know, we found one online and we, we ordered it and so it's on its way out here. We're going to use that in the tank. Um, I just feel more comfortable with it. It was pricey though. It was um, $34 for that, that, that donut that goes in there. And a comparable one from like Standard Auto Parts or Spectra, which is who makes the gas tank. I think Factory 5 may own the rights to that gas tank now. I'm not sure. Um, and uh, Dorman, they were all in the thirteen to fourteen dollar range online, anyways. If you're if you're going to your local auto parts store, obviously they're probably going to be more. But um, so they were basically half the price of the one that we bought from um, I think it was Amazon. But I feel more comfortable with that, so we'll have that. That doesn't slow me down. The fuel pump hanger does a little bit, so I'm probably going to move on to something in the front. I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to unpack the. Um, surge tank and I'm going to see what hardware and what type of bracketry that I'm probably going to have to fab up in order to get that tank in there. So that may be the next thing you see. Stones! Emotional Rescue. Alright, it's in. The um, the ring that holds everything on. You know, I should probably should have shown you guys the the way I do the gasket, I use the square gasket that comes with the um, the gas tank. Or Chris sends you one with this uh, this fuel pump hanger as well. I like them. For me, they tend not to walk like um, the round O-ring that uh, Factory 5 has started uh, sending. But I guess guys were having trouble with, with the square ones. The way I do the square ones is I actually lubricate the uh, entire gasket or O-ring with um, petroleum jelly and so therefore when it goes down it it, it, it just wants to go it, it wants to find the the, the notch or the uh, the recess that uh, is machined or pressed into the um, the gas tank from from whoever manufactures the gas tank and so I don't have a problem with them walking out of, of the um, the recess. But I, I, you know, there are some reports of, of guys having issues. So um, it is what it is. The um, the ring I do not hammer on with a drift. I actually take a pair of channel locks and I, I kind of grip it here and then on the opposite end and I, and I turn it until it locks into the tabs here and then it's done. Um, I found that one you you have trouble getting. A drift and a hammer in here and you need to do it like on all four of the tabs in order to get it to seat properly and in the process you're you're knocking that gasket loose my way you just kind of grab it with the channel locks and turn it gently and it'll just go and it'll it'll lock into place so it's it's done I've got to go ahead and um, get this vent tube in and I want to get these um, these uh, connectors terminated on both the, the, the fuel pump and the um, 
fuel level, uh, level, level sender, and then um, then I can start putting all this aluminum back in. So I'm hoping to get that wrapped up tonight, but I think I'm going to end the video here. All right, I want to thank you guys all for watching. Um, the, it's been it's been it's been fun. I mean, it was real hectic uh, the last the last week or so with um, you know the guys from out of town here. Um, I found that I wasn't get I wasn't personally getting a whole lot done. We as a as a whole got a lot done on the car, but I spent more time um, uh, I don't want to say teaching guiding um, a lot of what was going on in the car and a lot of time. Um, being kind of a gopher, you know, go for this, go for that, you know, getting the, the guy's tools because I know where everything is. It's my shop. So although we as a as, as a as a group uh, of three got a lot done, um, I personally didn't have a whole lot of hands on the car on those three days. So it was nice kind of getting back into the swing of things and getting some things accomplished on the car. I'm uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and work on the car the rest of this week. And then I'm going to probably have to roll this one off and get back on Jim's car to get some stuff done on that. And we're going to be juggling the cars back and forth for probably the next few videos. But um, anyways, again, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying the content, please do the like, the share, the subscribe, comment. Let us know what you like. Um, the wonderful thing about this is that uh, as long as I keep building Factory 5 cars for people, I have unlimited content. Um, it's not like I'm just building one. But um, I, I like to do some of my own projects too, and I'm hoping to sprinkle those in over the, 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 uh, you know, the next few months. But uh, it's tough. And uh, so we'll see how it goes. See you guys all next time. Have a great day.